And this is one of the hardest defenses to hit a one-play touchdown against, but you can see how easily this route concept creates a huge space that allows this guy to get open by about 5 to 10 yards for one of the easiest one-play touchdowns you're going to see. And this is what makes this formation so glitchy, is the fact that this guy gets completely forgotten and uncovered after about 20 yards, as there's nobody within 15 to 20 yards of him as we score another one-play touchdown. But you can do this setup as well, as you can see, this route gets open much faster and much quicker, as this guy right here is supposed to cover him, but he doesn't realize that until he runs past them. And we got a very quick and easy one-play touchdown catch and run against just about any match coverage style defense. For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another offensive breakdown for you guys today. And today's video I'm going to go over was probably my favorite offensive formation that I never share with you guys, probably since I was playing the beta for Madden 24, and that's the Gun Bunch TE. The reason I never showed this formation is because it's really well known, it's really popular, and it's very overpowered to the point where I wanted to save it for my ebooks. Uh, but it's to the point now where I really want to bring this offense out and share it with the rest of the world. So I'm going to show you guys a full breakdown from the Gun Bunch TE. But before I do, if you guys want to see more videos like this, more offensive and defensive breakdowns, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit like button, let me know in the comment section. And if you guys want more help or more money plays, you can download these or any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking links in the description or the top end comment. Now I'm using my custom offensive playbook uh, because that's pretty much just all I'm using right now since I'm pretty much just playing in my CFM for the most part. But there's also, it's in a lot of different offensive playbooks. I know specifically it's in my Jets offensive ebook. Uh, and I'll try to have on the screen all the different playbooks that you can find the Gun Bunch TE in. For my four audible plays, the most explosive ones are going to be the triple out and the PA boot over. These are going to be one play touchdowns against a lot of different defenses. The best dink and dunk plays are going to be the mesh and the RPO alert bubble, but the mesh is also one play touchdown against a couple different defenses as well. Uh, giving you really, there's only like four plays in this entire formation that you need. For my fifth play, I typically come out in something like the halfback slip screen before I audible over uh, because you can pretty much get the same those are pretty much the only five plays you need from this entire uh, playbook but sometimes i also use the first run play i'm going to show you guys which is the inside zone so we're going to go going to start off with that now when it comes to the run plays there's really not a lot to show the inside zone is a very basic concept i just want you guys to get into the habit of motioning out this receiver here which you can see has two benefits it backs the cornerback off but it also will disguise the one play touchdowns that i use that motion with a little bit later uh, you can also motion across the B receiver, but that really only works in man coverage. And this doesn't necessarily look like a man coverage uh, from the looks of it. As you can see, nobody follows, although nobody followed at all. So if this is a pass play, it'd be great. But like in the, the habit of making those two motions. Against zone, you want to motion out this receiver sometimes, the X receiver. And against man, you want to motion across the B receiver sometimes. It's really that simple. But you don't have to do that. If You can also run it like this. It's going to get better blocking behind the bunch if you just leave it like this. But, you know, like I said, it's dual purpose. So let's go ahead and let's just run this one time. You're going to try to shoot for that inside gap. But if they shoot that gap, the next thing is going to be to run it behind the bunch. It's really that simple. That's your read structure, inside out. I don't know why it gave me such a stupid uh, coverage there. I thought I picked random nickel, but I guess I picked random in general. Uh, as you can see here, we get a man coverage. Looks like a man cover too, if I had to guess. So once again, motion this guy across, takes that cornerback way out of the play. I should have my gap here uh, running right up the uh, up the center here like I, like I want to. And then you always want to stretch it to the outside. It's really that simple. So that's a very easy concept. But the RPO alert bubble is probably the better play of the two. So let's go and let's pick that. Now, when it comes to running this play, the easiest way to read it is just to watch the cornerback in front of the B receiver. Based off of what he does, we can decide whether or not you got to, to throw the ball or hand the ball off. But man coverage typically stops these type of plays. And since I see three receivers, or I see three cornerbacks in front of my three receivers, I'm pretty sure it's a man coverage because you don't typically see that when it comes to zone coverage. So that's the easiest way to do it. But like I said, to be sure, just watch the B receiver as the play starts with the cornerback in front of the B receiver as the play starts. You can see he follows. Uh, so it's to the point where I have to hand off. So it's really that simple. But like I said, you could usually make that read before the play. Right here, there's only two guys in that area. So I know I have a numbers advantage. And one of them came on a blitz. So that makes it even better. But you can see how, you know, it's a very simple read. Everybody should know how to run RPO plays by now. It's something that a lot of people are doing online. So it's really not something that should be new to anybody. But there is one more thing that you can do, and that is motion this receiver out once again. And you can see it turns into a short route. Now, this is not necessarily, um, you know, against man coverage, this will give you a third option. Against zone coverage, I don't necessarily recommend it. But against man coverage, you can just hit that quick pass. 
which is a really cool option considering one of the better dink and dunk plays is the mesh this is just your, tip, or your typical mesh double drags concept although you don't really have that guy over the middle a lot of times i'll put the running back i want to check down maybe expand it a little bit uh, because this is going to be something where i'm really going to be working these drags although a lot of times the drags will move the defenders out of the middle of the field and leave this guy just sitting wide open in the middle of the field so if your opponent is in some sort of zone coverage you can just put the y receiver on a streak to pull back and then you'll have a high low concept with the b receiver and the corner route uh, which i'm going to read from low to high so if the b receiver is open i'll take it because you can see we got a pretty decent uh, check down there but if the x receiver is open obviously it's going to be a much bigger play so that's pretty much it for the dink and dunk plays uh i have some dink and dunk plays you can do out of plays like the triple out and the pa boot over but those are the most explosive plays those are typically going to be uh, mostly one play touchdowns once i get to that point but i'm going to start with the triple out and then i'll end the video with the pa boot over because that's probably the best play but the triple out is a very good play as well so let's go and let's pick that for the triple out you're going to want to run this from the hash mark to the open side of the field like i am here uh, and for uh, the one play touchdown in the, um, you know, the dink and dunk plays, you're really going to just put the Y receiver on a slant or on a streak, the pullback coverage. And then you can put the X receiver on either a flat, if you know it's going to be a zone coverage, like this looks like it's going to be a zone coverage. Or if it looks like it's a man coverage, you can just put them on a zig. And you'll have a check down, which will get open a lot of times right off the line, because those routes will pull everything back and you just get a quick catch and run. This is one of my more favorite concepts to do. But these plays are really meant to be one-play touchdowns. So let's go and let's start off with the one-play touchdowns, starting off with cover two. We'll pick the triple out one more time. We'll pick Tampa two on defense. This play is a perfect uh, one-play touchdown against cover two. All you got to do is basically the exact same setup. Just streak the Y route, put the X receiver on flat. That's all you got to do. The Y route will pull back the safety. The B receiver will get open over the top. As you can see, we have a very easy catch and, catch and run one-play touchdown opportunity, even though we didn't quite get the score there. But uh, that's something that, you know, who wouldn't take a 50-yard bomb on any given play? Also has a lot of success against cover two man as well, so let's, go, let's pick that. If I want to do the full setup, I want to put both uh, the tight end and the Y receiver on streaks to pull back both safeties and keep them in check. Um, before I also, once again, put my give myself my zigging check down. I mean, I could also go with a slant if I want to give the user something to chase. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but other than that, I mean, this is pretty much the setup. I would also suggest smart routing the B route because it does shorten the route, meaning that I get the ball out of my hand a little bit quicker uh, because I don't want to be holding that all day because you can see how there's a, a receiver or a guy just right in my face. Uh, so shorting that by a couple yards can make that a much easier completion. So that's cover two. The only defense this really doesn't have any effect on is cover three. I'll have to get to the next play for that. But this does have a lot of positive effects against a lot of different man coverages, including cover one holes. So let's go and let's pick that. Cover one's going to be a little less consistent because you really need the receivers to bat or the cornerbacks to bump into one another a little bit more. So I recommend putting the uh, X receiver on a slant to try to create that. And once again, put your uh, your B receiver on a smart route. Just give yourself a little bit more time. And you can see how, you know, you get that same type of look where he can get over the top of this defense as well. You can also have a lot of success against cover zero, so let's go and let's pick that. For this play, all you have to do is block the tight end or put him on a check and release cross. Although I accidentally hiked the ball, which is totally fine because I, it doesn't really, you know, it's going to be the same receiver who gets wide open anyway. I, I was going to make a few more adjustments, but it is what it is. You can see how this receiver beats it to the outside. But what really makes this play special is what it does against matching coverages, things like matching matching cover four, uh, cover six, cover nine, stuff like that, as it's really a good play against pretty much any uh, you know, cover four defense. We're going to start off with cover four quarters, though, because this is probably the most impressive. There really is one important suggestion when it comes to personnel, and that's going to be where your receivers are. So if you have a receiver that has... Um, you know, any sort of ability to have additional routes. You're going to want to have him on the outside here. Obviously, if you have Hot Route Master or someone on your quarterback, it really doesn't matter. But since I have A.J. Brown on this team, I'm going to show you guys a couple additional um, adjustments you can make if you have a receiver or if you have Hot Route Master or any abilities like that. Against Cub for match, you got a couple different options. Well, number one, streak the Y receiver. Like I said, you can smart route that B receiver again. Uh, and if you don't have an ability on your receiver, like I told you guys to do earlier with this particular uh, spot here, you can just motion them out and put them on a comeback route. And that's all you really got to do. I'll continue to put the A tight end on a streak just to pull back coverages. But this is going to be all I really need as the B receiver just gets completely lost 
in coverage as I think the strong safety is supposed to cover him, but he is nowhere near to be found. And this is what makes this formation so glitchy is the fact that this guy gets completely forgotten and uncovered after about 20 yards as there's nobody within 15 to 20 yards of him as we score another one play touchdown. But if you want to get really glitchy, if you have hot route master or if you have um, an ability on the receiver to, to, to add additional routes. Just put that X receiver on a corner route and watch what happens now as he gets completely forgotten. Both receivers will get forgotten. This guy's going to get forgotten and the corner route above him is going to get forgotten. But obviously this corner route is going to get open that much faster. But you can do this setup as well. As you can see, this route gets open much faster and much quicker as this guy right here is supposed to cover him, but he doesn't realize that until he runs past him. And we got a very quick and easy one play touchdown catch and run against just about any match coverage style defense. So you can see how that particular setup is extra glitchy. That works against not just cover four quarters, but it's also going to work against matching style defenses like cover six. And you'll see how you can do the exact same setup where you can motion this guy out and, you know, put everybody on streaks and whatnot, and it'll have the exact same effect. Although I forgot to um, to put the B receiver on a, on a, uh, a smart route, but you see it works the exact same way that way, or the much easier way, which is just put this guy on a corner route. As you'll see here, it'll glitch it out the exact same way. That receiver will, or that cornerback will realize, hey, I'm supposed to cover that guy way too late. And it might not be a one play touchdown because obviously they, they, you know, there are guys down the field, but you can see how easy this is. I mean, this is just, this is like stealing. You know what I mean? You're just watching within a couple seconds and boom, the guy's gone. You know what I mean? He's just open. And if 16 can block, if he turns into a blocker, you're definitely going to score. And then last but not least, we have regular cover four, which I'll have to back out and go into the dollar formation. But this is one of the hardest defenses to hit a one-play touchdown against, and it's going to be very easy with this play. For this play, you're going to have to do the original setup where you motion out this receiver and put him on a comeback because he's going to hold that cornerback down while the streak pulls the safety back and the B receiver will just get forgotten. He'll just get left wide open. You also can't put the B receiver on a smart route because then the cornerback will pick him up. But you can see how this can get a very easy bomb over the top. And I didn't even get a very good pass lead. I could have pass led that outside much better. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that one more time to show you guys how wide open this play can get if I bullet and pass lead away from that safety a little bit more. As you can see, there's just nothing in space out here. The cornerback just gets completely roasted because he's too busy covering the shorter receiver on the comeback route. And this is one of the hardest defenses that a one-play touchdown against, but you can see how easily this route concept creates a huge space that allows this guy to get open by about five to 10 yards for one of the easiest one-play touchdowns you're gonna see. And that's it for the triple out. We hit a one-play touchdown against just about every single defense in the game, but I'm gonna show you guys another play that hits a one-play touchdown in the opposite direction, making this a very hard scheme to plan for. Uh, and that's the PA boot over. This is one of the best plays in the game. One thing I like to do, I like to just put the tight end on a streak to pull back the coverages. And you'll see how, especially against man coverages, the crossing routes will do a very good job of getting open for catch and runs. There, the B route will get open the fastest. Uh, the Y route is a very good crossing route as well. You can put the running back on a check and release or you know any number of things as well. But any man coverage, you can see how this is just roasting it. As we might have a one-play touchdown against cover one without even trying. So I'll, I'll show that again later because there is a lot of things you can do against cover one. But you can see those options. You can give yourself the double drags concept again. Uh, I can make that, I can do the exact same thing by streaking the running back too. Now I have a double drag and I have something to pull back the coverages. So, I, don't, I mean, it's giving me a lot of man coverages anyway. But you can see how there's a lot of things you can do here if you just have that streak and then you read low to high. But this play is really the one-play touchdown machine. So let's go and let's pick that again, and we're going to start off with Tampa 2. For this play, one of the most common setups is going to be to fade the Y receiver and put the B receiver on a slant. Uh, against a lot of different coverages. I also like to put the tight end on a block and release cross because that's a really good check down. I'm not blocking my running back. I really don't need the running back doing anything. Although if I want an extra route, like I said, an out route is going to be a good option. So I have a couple of decent check downs here, but the X receiver is really going to be the play. As you can see, the slant splits those safeties and makes it a very easy one play touchdown right over the middle. This play also has a lot of success against cover two man which pretty much the exact same setup so let's go let's pick that. Against cover two man the setup's going to be the exact same but I'm going to actually leave Goddard uh, doing what he's doing because I don't really want him um, you know blocking too much. As you can see the check and release did do a pretty good job and then we got these guys splitting safeties once again for another one play touchdown. Next up, we'll choose that play again, only this time we'll choose cover three, which we didn't do in the last play. So cover three sky. Against cover three sky, it works the same way with the fade and the slant to the B receiver. But you basically want to run from a hash mark to the short side of the field so that that slant has the desired effect on the outside cornerback. As you can see, he stays down too low for the crossing receiver. 
play also has success against things like man cover one, which we already accidentally saw earlier, but we're going to pick that again. So for this play, I'm just going to put the B receiver on a streak. And if I'm running from a hash mark to the short side of the field like I am here, you really have multiple options here. As that streaking receiver a lot of times will bump into the cornerback, which is you can see why this receiver was wide open, but he didn't catch it. So we're going to do it one more time. Like I said, his job really is to set a pick for these other receivers. You can see right there, it sets a perfect pick for this receiver. And he's going to be going for a catch on one play touchdown. As that's really all I'm watching for is whose uh, cornerback gets bumped off. On this play, this receiver is the MVP as his job is really just to set picks on defenders as he gets in front of that receiver's defender before allowing him to just get wide open across the field for a very easy catch and run one play touchdown against his defense. But he also can get in the way of the defender on the X receiver as well, allowing you another option. As you can see there, he sets a pick and we get another very easy one play touchdown to a very different receiver. But that receiver can also bump off the cornerback on this receiver as well. As you can see, both of these cornerbacks run into one another, making it a wide open one play touchdown to the deeper receiver as well. This play is also very good against cover zero with very little adjustment, so let's go and let's pick that. As I'm just going to put the A and the RB routes on check and releases for blocking, and pretty much every route on this play is going to get open, especially this route, as the post routes typically just get inside leverage when it comes to plays like this. And that's because he's given inside leverage as the play starts. He's starting to the outside of him, which means when he runs across the field, he's going to have instant separation every single time. PA Bootover also has a lot of success against matching defenses like cover four quarters. Against cover four match is going to be the same setup. Just cancel the play action with the right trigger. And you'll see how the post route once again, because it has inside leverage, will typically be going for a catch on one play touchdown as long as you have a fast enough receiver. And that also goes for defenses like cover four drops. Let's go and let's pick that. It's going to be the same setup, but you're going to want to run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field this time as the, uh, the B slant once again drops that strong safety, allowing this guy to get over the top for what I'm going to call a very easy one play touchdown because it looks like he might have crossed that plane, although I probably threw the ball a little bit early. So let's go and let's do that one more time. So I should be canceling my play action so it doesn't move the pocket too much, but you can see how the slant keeps that safety down as we get over the top for another easy one play touchdown. So I'm going to end the video there. We hit a one-play touchdown against every single defense in multiple ways. If you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, please make sure to be subscribed. Hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.